In episode seven, the Marines show up at Barati looking to find Luffy, but all they find is Zef. And as soon as they do arrive, Garp recognizes Zef from their battles together, back when Zef was, in fact, the leader of the Cook Pirates. But these days, Zef is just a cook, not a pirate anymore. So while he plays dumb about knowing where Luffy is, he does offer Garp a meal. The two sit down and share war stories together. And Zef kind of does his best to distract Garp from asking any more questions about Luffy. But after a while, Garp does bring up Luffy, and Zef tells him, the last thing I want to do is get in the middle of a family dispute. Because I guess Luffy being Garp's grandson is the worst-kept secret on the seas. Zef does tell Garp that Luffy is special, and he reminds him of a certain pirate back in the day that Garp brought to justice, Gold D. Roger. And Garp cuts him off because he doesn't even want to think about that. In the middle of this discussion, they get interrupted by both Kobe and Helmeppo. They had gone off to have a drink. Kobe revealed to Helmeppo that Luffy was indeed Garp's grandson. But then they found out where Luffy was headed via the bartender. So Garp immediately stands up. He says goodbye to Zeph and they head off to the Konomi Islands. Because that's where Luffy was headed. The Konomi Islands. That's where Buggy was directing them to. And that's where Nami's from. She's from the Konomi Islands, but she's from a village called Coco Village. She didn't grow up inside the village. She grew up on the outskirts in a tangerine farm. She grew up with her mother, who's an ex-Marine, and her sister, Najiko, neither of which were biological. When her mom was a Marine, she found both girls in a war zone, and she decided to take them in and keep them. Nami was more of the rebellious type. When they did go into the village one day, she stole a book full of maps, but she was later caught by her mother. Her mother made her take the maps back to the leader of the village, a guy who was kind of the sheriff, mayor of Coco Village, a person named Genzo, and give the maps back and apologize. But as she was doing so, the village was attacked by Arlong. He sliced up Genzo, he ransacked all of Coco Village, but as he was doing that, Nami and her mother tried to escape back to their hut. When Nami's mother arrived back, she told both girls to get under the floorboards and don't make a sound. And a couple seconds later, Arlong busted the door. He demanded that the villagers pay him a tribute to stay alive. Nami's mother had paid up, but she paid up for one. And as Arlong was leaving, he noticed that the table was set for three. He forced Nami's mother to admit that it was her and her two daughters there. And Arlong was about to kill her, and that's when Nami and Nojiko busted the floorboards and demanded that he stop. But Nami's mother knew that he wasn't going to stop. She asked Arlong if he would accept the money for both girls to stay alive. But that meant that she would die. And he did. So right in front of both girls, Arlong shot their mother in cold blood. You would think that Nami would want to bring Arlong to justice, but instead, she stumbled into Coco Village a couple days later and demanded that she join his crew. She's an incredible cartographer. So initially, Arlong didn't want to bring her on because she was human, but when he saw her skills, he decided to. But it was under one condition. Nami wanted to one day buy the freedom of Coco Village back. Now it was going to cost a lifetime worth of money, but he eventually agreed to her demands, and she joined his crew. She never once told Nojiko about this, though. And because of that, Nojiko really harbored a lot of resentment for her sister, joining forces with the guy that killed their mother right in front of them. But Nami finally has enough money to buy the freedom of herself and Coco Village back from Arlong. When Arlong's crew arrive back at the Konomi Islands, they set up shop in their normal place. It's an amusement park called Arlong's Park. It's there that Nami meets with Arlong and hands over the map. And Arlong's mission is to have fishmen rule the world. He feels like his kind has been persecuted for far too long, and it's time that humans pay. Now with the map, they know every marine base and pirate stronghold throughout the seas. They also know how to get to the Grand Line. She doesn't get a chance to ask about their agreement because as soon as she hands over the map, he says, oh, I've got another job for you. One of the villages is late with their tribute. It's Coco Village. And even though Nami's not really welcome there, Arlong's not giving her a choice. So Nami heads off to Coco Village to grab the payment. As soon as she steps foot in Coco Village, 
She's greeted by a lot of shocked villagers who can't believe she's showing her face and her sister. Najiko is really the only one that stands up to Nami. She's disgusted by her. She spits on her feet and then she walks off, wanting nothing to do with her. But as Nami is shaking down the villagers, she's unaware that the village has some guests. At this point, Luffy and his crew have arrived and they're just kind of standing back and watching the interaction between Nami and the villagers. Shocked that the person that they thought they knew was currently doing this. Once Nami does get the payment from Coco Village, she notices who is watching her, and she storms up to Luffy and says, you gotta get out of here now. I want nothing to do with you guys. But Luffy doesn't get the message. He just doesn't believe it. And no matter how much Nami hammers home the fact that she played him, she never was a part of his crew. She doesn't like them. She's not friends with them. She wants nothing to do with them. Luffy just refuses to accept that as reality. Once she storms off, the group is kind of split on what to do. Usopp and Zoro, they think that it's just time to go, except that this is who Nami is. But Luffy and Sanji, they feel like there's something more to this story, and they want to stay. And since it is Luffy's crew, they stay. They decide that they need to get to the bottom of what exactly is going on with the person they thought was their friend. So they track down her sister. Now at the time, they don't know that Najiko is her sister, but they quickly find out. And at first, Najiko doesn't want to give any information whatsoever about what happened with Nami. She doesn't even want to talk about Nami. But Sanji steps in and says, well, how about I cook you a meal? I'm going to cook you a meal and you give us some information. It's a win-win for both sides. And for Najiko, who's been basically eating nothing but tangerines her whole life, she quickly accepts that. As Sanji gets ready to cook, Nami has returned back to Arlong Park with the payment. They're hosting a little bit of a party, so she has to wade through all the partygoers to get to Arlong, but she hands it over. Even though it's a party, Nami wants to talk business. She wants to talk about the terms of their agreement. But Arlong tries to brush her aside and says, relax, it's a party. We can talk about this tomorrow. They then get unwanted partygoers in the form of Marines. Now, it's not Garp's crew. It's another Marine group. But these guys are corrupt. They get paid off by Arlong to look the other way. But they have shown up for their payment. And the head of this marine group, a guy named Captain Nazumi, tells Arlong that this time the fee's going to be double because Arlong's just causing too much of a ruckus. Arlong decides he doesn't want to interrupt the party, so they go and talk about this separately. And he tells Nami she's got to come along. Initially, Arlong pays exactly what the marines are demanding, But when Captain Nizumi says, you know, you're smarter than people give you credit for, Arlong takes that as an attack. He gets extremely insulted, thinking that it's a knock on his kind, Fishman. And he intimidates Nizumi into giving most of that money back. Once the Marines end up walking out with their tail between their legs, Nami asks Arlong, all right, well, what about our deal? And he's just shocked that she's gotten enough money. But she says, I have the money. And he says, well, I'm a man of my word. Bring the matter to me by sunrise, and I'll consider it closed. But once Nami leaves, Arlong turns to his second in command and says, go get Nazumi back. He tells Nazumi to track down Nami. She's got a ton of money and to confiscate it. Now, while all this is going on, Sanji had cooked an incredible meal for Nojiko, and she ended up spilling the tea, giving all the information about what happened between her and her sister. And it's a lot for the group to accept. The fact that Nami, the person they thought they knew, partnered up with the person that killed her mother in front of her just doesn't really fit her description. At least, that's what they thought. Luffy is so surprised by it, he needs to go outside and get some air. He's joined a few minutes later by Zoro, who says, Luffy, she made her choice. She's a part of Arlong's crew. But still, Luffy doesn't accept it. Zoro asks him, how do you know that she's not a part of Arlong's crew? And Luffy says, it's the same way I knew you weren't going to kill me once I got you off that cross. The same way I knew about Usopp. The same way I knew about Sanji. I know Nami's good. And she just needs to know it too. What they don't know is Nami isn't that far away. Because she's been hiding all the money she collected in her mother's gravesite. She had to go there and start digging it up. She gets caught, though, by Najiko, who wants to take her head off. But Nami says, no, Najiko, let me explain. And she tells Najiko everything about trying to buy the freedom of the town 
and Najiko can't believe that Nami held this within for so long. She feels really bad about the fact that she despised her sister, not knowing her sister's true intentions. But as they both are talking, that's when Captain Izumi comes up and spoils the party. He takes everything that Nami had, and Nami knows that it was Arlong who sent him. She is distraught. She runs away, she breaks down, she starts crying. She even starts stabbing at her tattoo to get her off of her body, but then she is stopped by Luffy. Seems like Nami goes through the seven stages of grief right then and there in front of Luffy. But Luffy never quits on her. So when she looks at Luffy crying and says, help me, Luffy says, of course. For the first time, Luffy actually has anger in his eyes as he wants to make Arlong pay. He collects his group together of Usopp, Sanji, and Zoro. And now it's just a matter of bringing Arlong to justice. But that's going to be sooner rather than later. Because as they look off in the distance, Coco Village is on fire. And that's because Arlong has started the war. Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel and subscribing to my Patreon. Hit thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought it sucked. If you left a comment, I don't get back to you. I usually don't check the comments unless they're like a super comment. Also, if you don't see the next video up on the end screen, not to worry. It'll be up in a day or two.